6.4 properties of rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. So we're going to define and classify each of these. So we're going to be looking at the properties of each of these today. Um, and then we're going to be looking at properties of diagonals of rhombuses and rectangles as well. Um, here are the definitions for the three shapes. So they're sh pretty short, pretty simple. So on your project, you could use these three um, pretty easily. Um, a rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So think about a rhombus as a square that's kind of forced into a parallelogram shape. Um, all four sides are the same, so it's kind of like a square, but when you look at it, it looks more like a parallelogram, okay? Um, a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. So all of these, since they say they are parallelograms first, all of the properties for parallelograms also go to these. Okay, so when you're thinking about a rhombus, a rhombus has all of the properties of parallelograms and the few that we're going to see in here. So it really has more than just this section because it does say parallelogram as well. So you might have to adjust your project that way. Um, so rectangle, four right angles. A square is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four right angles. So a square is kind of like a rhombus and a rectangle and a parallelogram all at the same time. Um, so you're looking for the four right angles and the four congruent sides, um, and that is what a square is. Um, Venn diagram shows the relationships among special um, triangles. I don't know if that should be special triangles, special parallelograms. Um, we have rhombuses off to the left, we have rectangles off to the right, but we have squares in the middle. So that just means that squares can be rhombuses and squares can be rectangles. So it's a combination of the two. Um, the first one is parallelogram A, B, C, D, a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square, and then you need to explain. So A, B, C, D is the one on the outside. Um, when you look at it, it does have, it's kind of hard to see in there, We'll keep that color. Um, notice how it has a right angle in one of the corners. Um, what do you think it is? Is it a square? Squares have the right angles plus all the same. Well, these don't look all the same and they're not marked all the same either. So I would say it's not a square, but is it a rectangle? Yeah, it's probably a rectangle. It looks like the opposite sides are the same. Um, and remember, for a rectangle, we need um, four right angles. That's all that you really need. Um, so we're going to go rectangle on this one. Um, what you really do on this one, it says parallelogram A, B, C, D. So all the properties of parallelograms are there. Um, you need to make sure you know um, why it's each of those. So for parallelogram, opposite angles um, are the same. And for the rectangle, we have four right angles. You don't have to describe the parallelogram part because it says that it's parallelogram already. Okay, so if it does say what is A, B, C, D, first you have to show it's a parallelogram, then you have to show what specific shape it is. Okay, so for this one, you don't have to do parallelogram because it does say it. How about this one? Um, they want to know parallelogram EFGH in the middle. What is that one? Okay, so when you're looking at that one, why is it a rhombus? You are correct. What made you say that that's a rhombus? Congruent sides. So when you're looking at it, it's a parallelogram, so we already know opposite sides are the same. So if opposite sides are the same, then they're all the same because they all should be marked with that single hash mark. So uh, four congruent sides. You can describe it like that um, and just keep it really, really super simple. All right, so then we get to theorem 613. If a parallelogram is a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular. So for a rhombus, it kind of reminds you of a square, remember, because all four sides are the same, but when you push those two opposite corners in, it forces those right angles into the middle instead. That's kind of how I think about it. So you're going to have four right angles right away in the middle, and that's going to help you find the missing angles and things. So notice how you have four right angles in the middle, and you have all sorts of triangles. 
all the triangles angles remember add up to 180 so if you're missing angles one of them is going to be a right angle what are the other two and then you can solve and do all sorts of things okay 614 if a parallelogram is a rhombus then each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles bisects means cut in half so what happens is this diagonal right here makes this angle and this angle the same it just cuts it in half and it does that all the way around so five and six would be the same so I should put them on the inside instead so three and four are the same and five are the same and you can continue on and go all the way around okay so the diagonals bisect the angles um, which is also going to help you figure out what the angles are what are the measures of the numbered angles in rhombus a b c d so the first thing you're looking at for a rhombus are all four sides are the same and all of these angles in the middle are right angles so we already know how much angle one is it is 90 so measure of angle one equals 90 so we also need two three and four Okay, so one right here is 90. Um, what about um, this 58? What does that do to help you? It, you need it somewhere, but how do you know where it goes? When you are looking at a rhombus, it's already a parallelogram, right? So opposite angles are the same. So which other angles are also 58? because there are some two and three so if opposite angles are the same um, this angle right here is 58 so is this one so is this one because remember the diagonal bisects it so it has to be the same so two and three are both 58 so now we have angles of a triangle one three and four so you have angle four plus 90 plus 58 equals 180 so 90 minus 58 would be 32 and that's all you need to do so if you had to give reasons you would have to say why okay so but we don't so measure of angle one is 90 because the middle angles of a rhombus are 90 okay um, 2 and 3 are 58 because the diagonal bisects the angle okay so it makes them both the same and it also is a parallelogram so opposite angles are the same then we used angles of a triangle for 1 3 and 4 to find that missing angle 4 okay so what are the measures of the numbered angles in this rhombus um, so what other angle is 104 okay so we have 104 um, we know that three and four are the same and one and two are the same right okay um, but we don't know how much they are so how many degrees left if we only look at this triangle right here how many degrees are left for those other two angles if it adds up to 180 how much 76 so we know that measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three equals 76 right we also know that they're the same right because opposite angles have to be the same so if we divide that 76 by 2 what is that 38 I think um, we know that both angles are 38 all angles in this one equal 38 degrees okay so we know that because 1 and 2 together and 3 and 4 together are the same we know that the diagonal diagonal splits them in half so however many degrees you have left you have to divide it into theorem 615 if a parallelogram is a rectangle then the diagonals are the same which makes sense because it um, the diagonal splits it in half and you have two equal triangles so these are more equational questions so you just have to make sure you write down your equations first so we have a rectangle SF is one diagonal RB is the other the theorem that we just said um, says that they're equal so 2x plus 15 equals 5x minus 12 
Um, I'm going to put the x's on the right, so I'm subtracting 2x. And I'm adding 12 to the left side, which makes it 27. And x equals 9. Now, I have my x, but that's not the length of the, di of the diagonal. So one of the diagonals is the same as the other, so it doesn't matter which one you plug it into. So I'm going to say, um, let's go with SF is equal to 2 times 9 plus 15. 18 plus 15, that must be 33. And then we're done. Would it have mattered if you plugged it into the other one? No, because they're the same. So I'm going to say, or RB is equal to 5 times 9 minus 12. So 45 minus 12, that RB is the same. And we already knew that. So you don't have to plug it in both places. You just have to use one of them because the diagonals are the same. And got it, number three. Um, LN is a whole diagonal. MO is also a whole diagonal. What are the lengths of those diagonals? So set them equal. Um, the reason I'm saying it's a whole diagonal, because sometimes they'll give you just this length right here. What would you have to do to get the whole thing? Times it by two. Times it by two. So be careful what they give you. Don't just assume it's always the whole length. Um, x is on the left, so I have 2x. Numbers on the right would give me 30. x is 15. And then plug it into one of them. Yep, so mo is 2 times 15 plus 13 is 30, 43. Mm -hmm. So mo is 43. And we know that ln is also the same. And if you only list one, that's OK, because we do know that they are the same. So diagonals are pretty easy. Um, so what did we do? We looked at properties of rhombus, rectangles, and squares. Basically, squares are all of them. It's a parallelogram, a rhombus, and a rectangle. Um, when you look at rectangles, rectangles are parallelograms and rectangles for properties. And then rhombuses are parallelograms and rhombus properties. So be careful when you are doing your project. Um, you'll have to define those as well. Um, and then the problems, if it's equational, this is kind of what I want to see on the quiz tomorrow and on your homework for today. You don't have to show a lot of extra work after that, but I do want equations shown, please.